Good morning and welcome to another vlog. I'm going to start the vlog with this. However, I did film a load of footage last week because if you are part of this community here on YouTube or you follow a lot of artists here on YouTube, you will have heard of Emily Harvey Arts and she has this fantastic Patreon community. If you are a small business or you just want to support small businesses, I suggest heading on over there. There is a humongous community over there that is just so welcoming, so big, so loving, so caring and so supportive. And I highly recommend going over there, checking them out and being part of it because it's the best decision that I probably ever made for my business. And Emily created this amazing event in Manchester where so many of us as patrons could go, could go meet everyone, could go and attend and meet Emily herself and just have the best day ever. Um, so I think about just over 70 people attended the event this time, bearing in mind Emily's Patreon is, is quite large, so it was actually quite a small chunk of it, but quite a lot of us managed to go. Obviously, it's a lot of travel. There are a few people from America. We had a few people from Ireland and Portugal, and then from up and down the country, it was just humongous. People were traveling from all over just to, to attend this. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, hello Mabel. Um, because the likes of Kelly's Creations, Deli's Designs, um, Emily herself and a few other people will probably do full feature length vlogs. Um, however, I was a bit too shy to be vlogging too much whilst I was there. Um, so I have a few, a few clips that I will pop up as we're talking, um, but it was such an amazing event. I had so much fun. I met people that I've been chatting with. Um, probably the key friend that I've been chatting with was, oh, no, let's want some food. Um, was um, Ouija Studios, Jenny. Um, she's from Glasgow and she's just amazing. I've been talking to the likes of Kat, Kezia, and it's been just the most amazing experience. I cannot, I cannot fault how amazing it was. Anyway, I'm gonna stop gushing and we're just gonna showcase a few things that I received at the event. We received a goodie bag and then loads of people did um, kind of giveaways slash raffle prizes, which were really good. Now I'm gonna tilt you upwards because I have one of them on top of my Kallax unit up here. Can you see this? Uh, where is it? The alien there, the purple alien. So that is by, um, crafted by Colette. She does a lot of crochet, but also general crafting, sticker makers, all sorts. And aliens are kind of a big part of her branding and um, she crocheted, I think it's crocheted, I hope it's not knitted, but anyway, I think she crocheted this lovely alien up there and I won that as part of my raffle, which was amazing. Um, she also included quite a lot of things as part of the goodie bags and things. So we have this lovely little sticker, alien sticker here. Here's some of Colette's details on the back if you want to go and check them out and support them as well. Um, she also did this cool little trading card thing where she's created little trading cards with unique numbers and then you take a blank trading card and you actually draw on it and then hand it back so it's a bit of a trading thing which I thought was quite cool. Um, we then had um, Bless uh, Colzo created these lovely she her badges um, and you know they them all of the pronoun badges which was amazing. I believe this is um, has. I'm going to write all these at the bottom. I can't remember everyone's username. It's so difficult to remember people's names and their usernames. Um, she created these for the goodie bag, I believe. We have uh, Katie Cannon Designs, I believe, created these lovely bookmarks. Very, very nice. So everything was branded for the eHearts market, which was lovely. Um, Emily created these lovely stickers as part of her community, which I love. Um, we got a little eHearts print in our goodie bags. Um, we also had this lovely notepad here. Um, Kelly's Creations over in Portugal, um, she's British, created these amazing little um, eHearts bingo. So she hosted the eHearts bingo. She did it at the market last um, year and then she brought it in person to the event, but she handcrafted all these little books as key rings. Um, she handcrafted all of them with the note, a little um, sticky notes on the inside. So how amazing is that? People really went above and beyond. Um, then we have Little Pickles K 
cakes created this lovely parma violet cookie to keep on brand with the lilac theme that is to die for i've kept this to one side because i really wanted to eat it um but i took my partner natalie so we had kind of double of everything which i'm quite pleased about and then last but not least um from my good friend jenny at ouija studios she created me one of her little nigel characters as a magnet so it's um, at Ouija Art Studio with underscores in between each word. But how beautiful is Nigel? I'm excited to pop him up. She actually created a few of us these and put our branding colours on the background, which I think is beautiful. I love Nigel. There's going to be a, a Kickstarter with a lot of Nigel products coming soon. So hopefully, you know, if you if you really like this character, suggest checking that out. Um, but yeah, so the event was amazing. I'll have put some clips over this in between all showing all this, but it was it was honestly incredible. The support there is amazing and I do highly recommend if you are a small business especially, go and check go and check the community out. It's amazing. There's just so much support. I had the best time and quite a few of us had took far too much to drink after the event and we ended up, you know, heading out and just having the best time it was just really really good but i just thought i would start the vlog with that a bit of footage a bit of kind of uh, just promoting such a, an incredible community um now let's get on we're doing a sublimation vlog so let's get on with that we have a lot of sublimating to do a lot of testing to do before we delve into actually making products to sell To another vlog as I mentioned in the last vlog I recently just picked up from another artist friend artistically Tori here on YouTube and Instagram um, their sister was selling all their sublimation stuff and it has been used once or twice and it was for a discounted price so I just went for it I purchased an Epson um, eco tank well it's a refillable tank um, printer which is sublimate converted um, then we have a, a heat press, <laughs> um, a swivel heat press and a mug press with a load of blanks and stuff, particularly mugs, there's loads of mug blanks. Um, and I picked all that up for a discounted price and I just thought, you know, what, I'm going to go for it and we're going to produce some sublimated items. I'd like to do tote bags, t-shirts, um, all sorts, keychains, I don't know, there's a, the possibilities are endless and at the moment we are doing mugs that's what my first thing that i've tested out on let me go and get the other mugs i've done so i've been testing these out now the first one i went on the the all of this machinery came with an icc profile which i'm kind of semi semi aware of which is it helps you basically print um, and design your stuff on Photoshop to match the profile that your Epson printer is going to print with the sublimation ink so that when you sublimate it on it should all be at the correct colours and etc etc so it took me a while to set all that up I didn't film any of it because it was boring I had to really get my own brain around it and um, so the first one I did that didn't have any of the proper proper colour profiling turned out like this <laughs> so obviously that 
that color is really dark it's not very good it's blurry as heck really blurry um but luckily when you heat up your mug press you're meant to keep a mug in there just so that you don't damage any of the heating elements so that was kind of good it's a bit of a practice slash um i kind of use it as my internal one now the second heat press bear in mind i've never done this before so i'm quite proud of the fact that i've not managed to waste anything as of yet um the second one i did was this design which is an old design um and it's it turned out really well actually to be honest it's ever so slightly blurry ever so slightly blurry and there's a slight band up here that's an ever so slightly different green i don't think you'll see it but that's what it's kind of looking at so that's definitely a second so it's a good job i'm part of the second festival because that can go in there um and then my third try i actually designed do you know the the 70 mini mushrooms that i did i actually made this so that it kind of looks like it's meant to be all higgledy piggledy at the edges um and i think that turned out perfectly I, I think it all looks really nice, um, really crisp, like as crisp as a sublimated item is going to get. It's really nice. I really, really like it. So that was my third attempt. And then as you just saw me, oh, as you just put, saw me pull out, I just did my dog's print, which has printed at the perfect colours. So I've managed to set my ICC colour profiles up really well. So I'm quite pleased with that, to be honest. Um, so that's my fourth attempt. Yes. Um, so that's two A grades and a B grade out of that those attempts, which is not bad. Um, and the one that's currently in now, which didn't start counting down, um, is the cat's print, I believe. So I it didn't start counting down, so I actually don't know how long that was. Uh, I've no idea. So I'm going to pull it out now. I'm going to pull it out now. Let's pull it out. Just in case. I don't want to do it in for too long. Um... I think a little longer doesn't seem to have transferred that image onto the sublimation i hope that's not damaged it oh that's annoying that that didn't count down i was just saying how well i've done without doing b grades ah oh, what a shame <laughs> maybe it is done do we risk it well it's a bit of a shame now i've already pulled it in and out so i've probably damaged the print quality anyway let's have a look let's have a look no i'm in trying is there so it's on there oh. and it looks perfect fabulous so yeah it's going really really well it's going really well i don't want to jinx it but yeah it is going very well so there's your cat print at the moment i'm just going to do one of each of the prints that i have um oh it's got a little bit of ghosting in this corner can you see mm. i'll discuss i'll have a discuss with natalie later but yeah, there's definitely an element down here that's not quite as saturated as the top. Um, I don't think the other mugs have that on. No, they don't. So that might have been because I just pulled that out. Anyway, it's it's working really well. I'm really pleased. We've got mugs going. And like I said, I'm going to do just one of each mug. Um, and I'm going to take them to my market this weekend and just see how they do. There's no harm in trying, is there? Um, and start making this money back that I spent on all of this stuff that I probably shouldn't have spent at this moment in time. But it's looking good. It's looking really good. So I'm pleased with it. I'm pleased with it. I'm going to turn this off because I need to see whether I want to do any other designs. Um, and then I think it's on to heat press. So it's exciting. Sublimation's exciting. I didn't think I'd get into it quite as much, but I'm already in awe of how it all looks. Um, and I hope you're excited to come along with this journey on with me. Um, I do have a hundred tote bags that I bought for my screen printing venture, which ended up not panning out quite as well as I thought. However, they are all cotton and you cannot sublimate on 100% cotton. It has to be a polyester cotton blend, predominantly polyester. Um, so I think I may have to buy DTF transfers for that and then heat press those. Um, so they won't go to waste. They'll be coming. So they will be designs on tote bags coming shortly, hopefully. Um, yeah. But let me know if there's any designs you really want to see on anything. And let me know what are your thoughts on... Oh, not that one, that's the rubbish one. What are your thoughts on these more full colour ones? Obviously, you're going to have that white banding. I could probably extend that a little bit more, but I don't want to risk um, any bleeding or ghosting because I've ex extended that. And obviously, by the handle, there is that gap either side, which is... I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it's not amazing. <laughs> um, so... Let me know your thoughts on the full colour design or do you think I try and manipulate these without a background so that it kind of looks more like this? But again, you still have that banding at the back. Um, I don't know. Let me know. Let me know. 
but I'm excited. I'm really enjoying it. So hopefully you're enjoying it as well. Um, and we can keep going, but give me more ideas of what I could do. I'd really like to do more. Um, at the moment, like I say, I'm just doing the designs that I've got currently in the shop. Um, and then we'll start venturing to doing specific mug designs, maybe something a bit more, I don't know, muggy. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts and we'll catch up soon for some more, some more heat pressing. <laughs> Right, so I think I was a bit uh, overconfident at the start. <laughs> um, I've had quite a lot more B grades. We've had a lot of issues. I initially started to lengthen it because I thought the white space on the mug was just too much. So I lengthened the design and then I printed it multiple times and realized that it cut off part of the length and cut off part of the width. So it was too thin. Um, then Natalie had the fantastic idea of including my logo in the bottom corner, so I've added that in now. Um, I've had, like I say, a number of B grades, and the problem that I've been having is that it is fading at the bottom here. How annoying. Fading at the bottom. And then we had a little bit of fading on the edges here as well. Not that one, on that edge there. So what I've done is I've shrunk the length back down because clearly it's too long, it's not getting the heat there. And we did some research. Well, Natalie did some research. So thank you to Natalie. Um, and basically, because the bottom of the mug is a lot thicker, it stays colder for longer. So basically, the rest of the design starts to sublimate and the bottom doesn't. So you need to either leave it in a lot longer, which then can damage the top part, or you need to preheat your mug. So we've just left these mugs on the radiator. In fact, I'm going to swap this back over because I've been yapping. And so this is actually cooled back down. But I've been put I put the ra the mugs on the radiator to heat the base up so that that will sublimate at the same time as the body. We're going to try again. We're going to see what's going to happen. Hopefully it works. Um, but as you can see, I'm a bit dishevelled because I've been trying to do this all evening. Um, and I probably should be making spiders for the stall. Just dawned on me. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to try these three mugs, see how they come out. Um, and I'll kind of film a little bit of the process as well. Yeah. afternoon i am not showing my face because i've been ill for the last couple of days and look a little haggard um but it's after work and i am actually just only just now when it's thursday decanting all of my stock back into my shelves from the market and then my partner and i have discussed that i have tons and tons of packaging in here board back envelopes bubble mailers boxes 
bags, all sorts. And basically we have decided that we're going to take out basically half of everything um, and pop it in this box and put it in the attic because we don't, I'm not selling quick enough to warrant having all of this packaging out and it's just using up loads and loads of space on my shelves. So we're gonna clear those out, condense hopefully into two shelves there or one shelf maybe. Um, and then I'm actually going to clear these shelves out and put all my sublimation stuff. So this is all the stuff that came with the uh, machines. We've got blank mugs, we've got um, mug boxes, blank notepads, coasters, all of the cushion covers and vinyl and things like that. And basically we're going to condense all of that and pop that into there so that I can easily access. I might even decide to put those under there and I pull them out when I need to use them. I'm not sure, it depends how much room and space I have. But I think that's just the best play for this because these shelves are packed full of stuff that can be sorted and condensed down. And we have an attic that's got plenty of room in it, so why not condense all this down? So that's what we're in the middle of doing. Um, but I've just, I just realized my address is on top, so I'm just gonna roll. Okay, apologies for that interlude. I I spilt my tonic water all over my desk and all over my electronics, which was fantastic. But as I was saying, I purchased some blanks from, I think it's called, and it's about to be revealed. One moment. The Subly Blanks website. Now they sell, as the name alludes, blank um, items that you can sublimate on and Oh, this is all very good packaging. I purchased a number of things. It came to about 40 quid. I got two of each item so that I could practice on them, see how I like it, see whether I want to use it. But I don't want to be silly with it. With the mugs, I had quite a lot to play with, so I was kind of testing the waters with the designs I already had. But with a lot of this, I do want to design some specific things for them. So I think firstly, which I'm assuming is in these because they're glass, I bought, which seems to be a big thing at the moment, um, I know catnip does them especially, um, the glass uh, tumblers, they're like can tumblers. Let me open it and you can see. So, they are the frosted glass tumbler with a bamboo top. So I wanted to just see what they felt like, what they looked like, whether my heat press will hold them okay. But yeah, I just thought this was a cool little item. Obviously things like my patterns that I've been doing on the mugs are not gonna look good on this because you're gonna have a lot of kind of this rounded corner and this top here that's gonna be blank. And I know on a mug you have the same, but it's not quite as um, drastic. Um, so I'm hoping to kind of do some designs and I'll give you a little hint at a coming up mini series. Mabel's using her treat thing. She seems to do that every time I start recording. Um, I'm thinking, and this is a hint to a future mini series, I'm thinking of doing a jellyfish mini series. And I just think the jellyfish kind of swimming along this will look beautiful. So yeah, I've got two of these. Um, they do, they are supposed to come with straws, which I think are down here. Yeah, we have metal straws, which I'll unbox in a second. Um, but yes, it's not the glass straws. I think if I was to do the glass ones, I think I might have to outsource, but maybe this isn't the place that I'll do these. Um, get these from anyway but I just thought this website seemed pretty good and everything seemed at a really reasonable price um, but yeah they seem really nice so that'll be exciting to try on so that's the first item like I said I got two of everything then I thought what would be interesting especially for my cats and dogs launch is sublimating um, dog bandanas <laughs> so this is actually quite a small size I didn't realize how small this size would be it's probably not going to fit many dogs, but we can test it anyway and then potentially get the bigger sizes. But I thought that was really cute. Um, I do a couple of markets that are very dog heavy. Um, they're outdoor markets and these would be perfect for that, especially with my dog patterning on or something similar to that. So I thought that they would be worth trying and that's something we can try straight away. Like I say, it's not going to fit many dog necks. I didn't realise when the measurements came up, this is what it meant. <laughs> but anyway, they do bigger sizes, so we will just have to do that. Um, but that looks interesting. Then, of course, any sublimation uh, would not be complete without uh, mouse pads. These are the metal straws that you get with those mugs, which I quite like. I like that they're not glass, because the glass ones can sometimes 
break very easily so that's that's quite good they sit in there quite nice but yes i got some mouse pad blanks so we have the rectangular and we have the circular uh, just wanted to try them out i think they they look like a really good quality actually quite a lot thicker i'm pretty sure these were measured as the same thickness this one's thicker than this one so interesting <laughs> interesting but um very good very good we can try those out again i don't want to rush into all of this i want to make sure that we are doing the right stuff then i got some linen i didn't realize you could sublimate on linen but we can apparently i got some linen um pencil cases again two of those but i wanted to see how obviously you can't do a full pattern on these because you're going to not get it over the ends here i don't really know how it's going to work but that's why i wanted to try them so we've got some linen ones of those and then last but not least like i say this cost about 40 quid for all of these blanks so it's not the cheapest because what have we got two four six eight ten twelve items for 40 pounds so it's not the cheapest but i guess i'm they're good quality items so i'm not going to sell them for the cheapest if that makes sense um, they'll be a good price, obviously. Um, but yes, I thought it was quite interesting to get a linen notebook. I thought it looks quite nice. It looks good quality. I'm obviously doing stationery fest soon, and this would be a great little item to add to it. But it's A5. My only worry about this... Oh, that goes this way. My only worry about this is that my... Uh, heat press is about a it's a4 basically so obviously anything over a4 you're running the risk of missing the corners especially if it's just a4 in size with which this will be when i sublimate on it but the inside actually comes out so it's a reusable one which i thought was really interesting um so you obviously open it out like this you pop it onto your heat mat like this i do worry about this spine but again this is what we are testing this for you sublimate it flat like this so i thought it's really interesting and i have an idea in mind for this already um and i think potentially it could be one for these as well um it's not a full pattern but it is a wraparound pattern and again i'm alluding to another future mini series which i'm going to base on the spread of the front of my sketchbook which is this orangutan rainforest like thing but how nice would this be across there i mean feel free to vote would you use this size would you have this as your so obviously this would be the back this would be a front it's not ideal which way it goes but that's the way it goes um would you have this side or would you have this side just looking at this this would obviously be the back which is not ideal but oh although would you want this as the front and you have a place to paint your name or something i don't know please vote in the comments below would you would you have this as your um notepad uh, note i can't talk notepad cover or would you have this side please let me know but this is again alluding to another mini series in the future i also thought that would be really nice to wrap around the glass mugs as well so something to potentially try but i thought this was interesting this then comes with the filler which you just slot in here which i thought was great because then if people buy this they can buy refills for it <laughs> don't you think that's cool i think that's really i think that's really really cool and do you know what i would love to offer something like this um and i thought it was a good price for the notepad to be honest i thought it was just really nice so something to look forward to doing i'm excited to do all of this i'm going to crack on with doing some more organizing and hopefully get all this away and then maybe we can do a bit of playing and see what we can come up with be interesting right so first point of call today is i want to test out the a5 notebooks i did <laughs> i opened them up when i received them and obviously the line the paper inside that you slot inside is a5 however the actual cover is not A5, but it's not even A4. It's quite a lot larger than A4. So basically I've designed this to the size of the cover, which is a bit bigger. And then we're actually going to, uh, where is it? We're actually going to print this, um, but we're going to change it to poster up here. And then we're actually going to 
well, it's going to tile it automatically. <laughs> um, I then also want a slight little bit of overlap. So I am going to just scale this up by 102. We're going to put this on the sublimation printer. And then hopefully that will print. We're going to have to obviously mash two pieces of paper together. Um, this is all trial and error for this notepad, but hopefully it looks good. I like the design. I think it looks good. I know I said um, when I was discussing this design, which side you would prefer. I think having at least the orangutan on the front would be ideal. I don't really want it on the back. So I think this might be the design that we go for. But still let me know just in case you prefer the bigger orangutan. I can always form... Um, I could always flip it and kind of form it going the other way. Um, but this, I think this will look good. So let's let's print this and then let's try and sublimate this and see where we get to. All right, so this is the notebook. It's got this really love, lovely faux leather inside. It's got this linen texture on the outside there. And then the insert is actually this lined paper here. And you actually can insert this and reuse it and then when you fill this you can take this out and add a new insert so i thought it was really cool to have a reusable uh, notebook so as you can see this is the top which <laughs> in my head i thought would be a4 which is probably as large as my sublimation um, heat press can go um, and obviously that's as large as i can print as well but unfortunately it isn't so that's why we've done the tiling and as you can see this should now fit a hell of a lot better which is nice we just have to overlap that we have to put it on a sturdy surface on the front and the back tape it all together as tight as possible because i'm gonna obviously have to do two heat presses on it um which worries me slightly but we're going to cut these up we're going to then board back all of this and make sure it's all in boards and then yeah we're gonna just see how that goes but i'm a bit worried about this because if this doesn't work, I can't get anything this size. I'm going to have to try and get smaller notebooks, which is a bit of a problem. But let's try it anyway. Let's try it anyway. I did all that and then I realized I didn't print it mirrored so it's the wrong way so I'm gonna have to take all this off and redo that again but I'll spare you watching that all over again right so that is all boarded up really rigid it should be really easy to take in and out without moving it too much um pleased with that it took me quite a few time attempts to print it out though it was really kind of annoying um but I believe the temperature one second let me check again the temperature is 215 degrees and we need to do it for 45 seconds so we're gonna te uh, do the temperature to 215 degrees quite hot then we want it for 45 seconds and apparently we want a medium pressure so I am going to loosen that a smidge. Is that a light pressure? Is that a medium pressure? I have no idea. I don't know what's... I think that's a medium pressure. It's not too hard. It's like a good... Yeah, I think that's a medium pressure. Okay. So let's get this going. I'm a bit nervous, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> a bit nervous. But we're going to have a go, we're going to have a go. So we're going to let this get up to temperature. Then we're going to slide in the first half of this. Um, hopefully because it's going to be going in halves, we have a bit more opportunity to kind of get it more central and a bit closer to this edge because um, I've noticed if you go too close to the edges, it doesn't sublimate quite as well. Uh, let's get out the heat gloves. Oh, not chewing my head. 
All right, I'll tune you back in when we're ready to press. All right, it's time. I'm really, really nervous. <laughs> I hope this works. I really, really do. But anyway, let's get this first half in. So I think I'm going to do it so that bottom lines up with that. So the overlap that's going to be printed twice is going to be the, the seam area. And I think that's where we're going to have issues because it's a little baggier. It's not as... Um, kind of flat so I don't even know whether actually the pressure will keep that looking crisp and clean anyway and um, but that might just be how these notebooks are going to turn out but I think if we press that twice it won't do it any harm um let's put our parchment paper on top let's slide that in all right and then let's go All right, let's have a look. Let's have a little look. Now it's getting this off here quickly. <laughs> Taped it to within an inch of its life. Don't think we need the gloves quite as much with this. It's not like the mugs where they retain the heat. All right, let's see. Oh, it's so faint. How annoying. How annoying. How annoying. It's so faint. Really faint. And like I say, in that seam in the middle, as you can see, it's really not worked there at all. I wonder if, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Controversial, I know. I'm gonna do it though. I'm gonna put it back in. Turn this back on. Um, I think that's how that side went. I'm going to pop it back in because what have I got to lose now? It's kind of not really worked anyway, uh, has it? So what have we got to lose? Let's pop it back in. See whether we can salvage a bit of it, make it look a bit crisper, a bit cleaner. All right, I gave it another press for the same amount of time, plus a little extra time. Um, and I thought, what's the harm in trying that? Um, so let's see if that helped at all. I, I'm fully aware that this might blur because obviously we printed it twice. Ooh, yeah, that's way better. Way better. I think more pressure and more heat and a bit longer, and I think we've got it. I don't know, I don't know whether, I think it should work, but again, that spine, that spine, you need a strip of something, you need a strip of something, but that's what it looks like, it's not too bad, I mean, if the spine's a little lighter, it's not the end of the world, because it is on that, that edge there, but that would be your front of your sketchbook, and then that would be your back of it, so it's not too bad. It's not too bad, the detail's kind of there, but this texture's kind of not lending itself well to the detail. Um, there is a little bit of ghosting, I think that's because I put it back on. But we're kind of there. We're kind of there. I think I'll attempt it again, not right now, I need to get back, I need to, not get back to work, I'm not even start work, but work starting in five minutes, so I need to get to work. But I think that's a good first, first try. It's not the end of the world, I'll definitely use that myself. Um, but uh, not, uh, I think it's a valiant try. I think it's, it's a valiant try. We know what we're doing. I feel like we kind of know what's next and what to do next, but yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Hmm. I quite like the design. Nice. Good morning. I didn't get as much done yesterday as I thought. So I obviously did the um, notepad test um, yesterday morning before work and then Oh, basically, 
I've kind of not mentioned it. We've been battling with this for probably about a week now. Our Mabel, thank you. Our border, um, we've been building up a bit of a rapport. One second, Mabel's dropped her ball. <sighs> um, basically, we've been building up a rapport with a border um, where Mabel goes to their house and they sit Mabel and it's all been going really well. We've done probably about three different occasions now um, and it costs us £30 a night. So it's not the cheapest, not the most expensive, but um, We've been building up this rapport and basically i'm not going to go into details but they can't do the boarding anymore and we've been let down a bit last minute we go on holiday well basically they let us down just before the e hearts market and we obviously needed them to look after mabel for a night we ended up doing a three hour round trip to my mum's to drop mabel off um for one night which was not ideal and then obviously the next day after the e hats market we had to drive all the way up to my mum's get mabel and then bring her back which is another three plus hours um but we are going away on holiday in a week and a half now to italy for just over a week and again obviously that's two weeks from them letting us know and we've been struggling to find someone obviously all the borders are pretty much booked up this last minute um we've had some lovely offers from the community the art community you know shout out to joe at bella and archie who was a hundred percent willing on um taking mabel into their home and you know and, and a lot of them were if they were closer they would have 100 percent taken mabel for us so shout out to the community for really having my back there um but we obviously wanted something a bit local and something um i don't know something easier to do when we get back from a long flight we have to go and pick her up obviously so um but we've managed to get in touch with a kennels it's not ideal we, we didn't really want to do kennels because we liked the we liked the home aspect of a border because mabel is very much um you know spaniels are labeled uh, velcro dogs for a reason they love to be with a person um and i think the boarding was a better way of doing that because they'd be with the person 24 7. um but we've had to go with the kennels because it's the only place that we've we've contacted probably about I'm not even exaggerating about 20, 22, 23 people um, to try and get someone. But again, like I say, just the borders were the only people with some availability. So that's what we've had to book. It's been quite stressful. So um, the last couple of nights I've not managed to do anything. This vlog's going to go up a little bit later, which is not ideal. Um, my stats on YouTube are not looking great at the moment. So I really need to get back on it. I'm going to, I have the weekend here by myself. I do need to nip into town to shop with my brother ready for the holiday, but other than that, I'm going to film, I'm going to prep, I'm going to get everything ready for whilst we're away because obviously I'd like some videos to be going up whilst we're away. Um, but yeah, so that's the long and short of it as to why I didn't get anything done last night because we were sorting this boarding out and we're quite pleased. We're just waiting for the final reply after giving all the information. Um, but yeah, so I've been printing out and designing some bits. So we have, this is a mug wrap. I kind of designed squash moved some bits about to make this into a mug wrap which i think would be quite nice um we have we are going to try the notebook again i'm going to put a lot more pressure and a bit longer time on there i hope that will help and then i've just been working on what we can put onto these bandanas so i think naturally the dog pattern will be perfect for that so i've designed this it's going to be chopped where is it, where is it? it's going to be chopped i think kind of down at a diagonal like this and then one one each in each corner like this and then we've got this la uh, logo which is going to go on the back here as my branding which I thought was quite a nice little idea so we're going to try that out as well so three little products to get done we have about an hour until I have to start work um yeah so let's get cracking I've just had a shower so it's not greasy, I promise. I've just got wet hair. <laughs>
right, I've got to start working about five minutes, but we've had a semi-success. We've had a semi-success. So as you saw, the mug turned out really, really nice. Really like it. I actually lightened the mug on Photoshop before printing it. And I actually think I could do with just taking that adjustment off. I think it doesn't need to be that light. Um, it's got it's quite light on here, to be honest. Um, it's fine, it's absolutely fine, and I would sell this as an A-grade. Um, but yeah, I potentially would take the lightening off it because it could do with maybe just going a bit darker to match the actual artwork. But other than that, printed perfectly. Highly recommend doing the hot water in the bottom of your mug because obviously this is a lot thicker at the bottom and it takes a lot longer to heat up. So that's why sometimes you have ghosting at the bottom. I've learned the hard way that you need to put some hot water in there just to heat up the bottom of the mug and then the whole thing will sublimate really, really nicely. Next is not a success, but also I've learned from it, so it's fine, is the bandana. It looks fine on here, but it is quite light. I could have done with maybe a bit longer on there just to get that um, more crisp, dark blacks and dark edges, but it looks really nice. And same on the back here, my logo could just do with being a little bit darker, a little bit better, but I think that's a really cute little bandana for a dog. I'm really pleased with that. I think that turned out really, really nicely. It printed very well. Like I say, it just needs to be a bit darker, so I'm a bit longer under the heat. Um, and likewise with this, I think I was getting a bit nervous because this obviously feels like polyester. So I was, I was, for some reason, I was really panicking that I was doing it for too long. But I think definitely just a little bit longer on that. So I might try another one of those later because I have two of each, um, which will be good. And then our notebook turned out chef's kiss. I'm really pleased with this. The the nature of this faux linen is that it's never going to be, it's going to be crisp, you're going to have a crisp design, but because I've done mine in like a natural um, watercolour painterly style, it's kind of, you're not going to get that crispness as a digital piece of artwork would be, but there's your front cover, very, very nice. The spine printed perfectly, I added a little bit of board on the inside and that helps that print perfectly. And then there's the back. Oh. I cannot tell you how excited I am. So these will be coming to the shop, not anytime soon. I'd like to start my next launch, which is this is, like I've said, is alluding to. Um, but you've got a little notebook and it's you can take it out and replace the inside as well. So it will be a forever notebook, um, loads of pages in there. Um, not sure how much I'm gonna charge for these yet. I'll have to see how well they all come out when I start doing them but this is definitely for sure something I'd like to do I've worked out how to print it out and what settings I need to write all these settings down um but I think it looks really really nice I think the detail came out really nice and my logo on the back I'm so pleased with those but I'm gonna end the vlog there it's been a bit of a tumultuous one like most sublimation vlogs are I've been really testing things out I've got a couple more blanks like I say that's the last of my notebook blank but I do have another one of these I have some pencil cases and some um what you call them mouse pads um in round and rectangular so we will try those next vlog I think I just want to maybe have a look at the designs and see what we can do in terms of designing on those um but yeah I'm really pleased I'm really really pleased I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've learned a little bit with me. If you'd like me to go into more depth with my timings and stuff, but they're not kind of um, a guidance too much because everyone's heat presses are different. I have learned that the hard way. And I've also learned that sublimation websites where you buy your blanks, don't fully trust them because you do probably have to apply a little bit more time, a little bit more heat. Um, that seems to be the kind of consensus for me anyway but i hope you've enjoyed watching this i hope you sort of like this snippets of the eharts market um and i will see you in the next vlog hopefully before i go on holiday and then hopefully we might have a little bit of a holiday vlog as well so um stay tuned for that and i'll see you very soon